In the complex and often shadowy world of global security, few systems evoke as much intrigue and apprehension as Russia's so-called dead hand. Officially known as Perimeter, this Cold War-era system is the stuff of both military strategy and popular legend, a mechanism designed to ensure that Russia could retaliate with nuclear force even if its highest leadership were wiped out in a surprise attack. Recent references to dead hand by prominent Russian figures have reignited public interest and concern, prompting many to ask, what is dead hand? How does it work? And what does its existence mean for the world today? To understand the dead hand system, we first have to revisit the dark logic of nuclear deterrence. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union amassed vast arsenals of nuclear weapons, each capable of devastating the other many times over. This balance of terror, known as mutually assured destruction, rested on the assumption that neither side would dare launch a preemptive strike, knowing that the other could retaliate in kind. But what if one side's leadership were obliterated in a first strike, unable to give the order to retaliate? The Soviets saw this as a potentially fatal vulnerability. In the late stages of the Cold War, Soviet military planners developed Perimeter, the dead hand, not as an offensive weapon, but as the ultimate insurance policy. Its purpose was chillingly straightforward, to guarantee that a nuclear response would be unleashed automatically, even if the chain of command was destroyed or communications severed. The mere knowledge of its existence was intended to deter any adversary from considering a decapitation strike. So, how does the dead hand work? While exact details remain classified and shrouded in secrecy, enough information has emerged from declassified documents, expert analysis, and rare interviews to piece together a picture. Perimeter is not a single device or button, but an automated command and control system. It stands as a last resort option, activated only when Russian authorities believe a nuclear attack is imminent or underway. Here's how, how the system is believed to function. In a period of heightened tension, Russia's top military and political leaders can choose to activate Perimeter. Once armed, the system monitors a network of sensors for signs of nuclear detonations, seismic activity, abnormal radioactivity, or the loss of communication with key command centers. If these catastrophic conditions are detected and certain protocols are met, Perimeter takes control. At that point, the system will send a GO signal through a network of command missiles. These specially designed missiles don't carry warheads themselves. Instead, as they fly across Russian territory, they broadcast launch commands to silo-based intercontinental ballistic missiles, mobile launchers, and even submarine-based missiles. In effect, Dead Hand becomes the conductor of a doomsday orchestra, ensuring that Russia's nuclear arsenal is unleashed, even if those who would normally give the order are gone. It's important to note that Perimeter is not entirely autonomous. Human judgment is required to activate the system in the first place. This key safeguard was reportedly built in to prevent accidental Armageddon, a fail-deadly mechanism rather than a fail-safe one. Only if the leadership is incapacitated and the system's sensors confirm a devastating attack does Perimeter execute its grim mission. The existence of Dead Hand was kept secret for years, but in the decades since the end of the Cold War, Russian officials and military experts have gradually acknowledged its reality. Reports suggest that Perimeter remains operational, albeit updated and maintained to modern standards. The system is periodically tested and reportedly still forms a cornerstone of Russia's nuclear posture. Why does Dead Hand matter in today's geopolitical landscape? Its continued existence is a stark reminder of how the logic of mutual destruction persists, even after the Cold War's end. The idea behind Dead Hand is not unique to Russia. Other nuclear powers maintain their own forms of second strike capability, though few are as automated or as shrouded in legend. The system's very presence is meant to deter adversaries from ever considering a decapitating first strike, maintaining the fragile balance that keeps nuclear powers in check. But Dead Hand also raises profound questions and concerns. Critics argue that automating the decision to launch nuclear weapons, even with safeguards, introduces new risks. What if sensors malfunction or if false signals trigger an unintended launch? What if the system is activated during a period of political chaos or miscommunication? The consequences of a mistaken launch would be catastrophic on a global scale. Furthermore, the renewed references to dead hand by Russian officials in contemporary rhetoric, such as recent warnings to foreign leaders, 
underscore the continued relevance of nuclear brinkmanship in international politics. Such statements are often intended to signal resolve, to remind adversaries of the ultimate stakes involved in any confrontation with a nuclear-armed Russia. For the rest of the world, the existence of the dead hand system is a sobering fact. It's a reminder that, despite decades of arms control agreements and diplomatic efforts, the threat of nuclear war, however remote, has not disappeared. Instead, it has evolved, taking on new forms as technology advances and as geopolitical rivalries persist. In the end, Perimeter is both a technical marvel and a symbol of humanity's ongoing struggle with the dangers of its own inventions. It embodies the paradox at the heart of nuclear deterrence, that the ultimate guarantee of peace may rest on the willingness to unleash unimaginable destruction. The system's legacy is a call for vigilance, dialogue, and continued efforts to reduce the nuclear threat, lest the machinery of apocalypse, once set in motion, escapes the control of those who built it. As the world faces new challenges and uncertainties, the story of Dead Hand serves as a powerful reminder of the stakes involved in nuclear policy. It urges leaders and citizens alike to consider not just the weapons themselves, but the systems, safeguards, and decisions that surround them. The hope, as always, is that such systems will never be used, but that they will continue to prompt the world toward caution, cooperation, and ultimately, disarmament. Stay with APT News for in-depth analysis and the latest updates on global security, nuclear policy, and the forces that shape our world.